Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I, I'm excited because it's starting to get cold. It's like 44 degrees outside and I'm like, yay. <laughs> I love cold weather, guys. Not too cold. I mean, not to be really out in it, but I don't know. I just like cold. I don't like when it's too hot. Oof, just sweating. I do my best work in the cold and when it's raining. I love when it's raining and stuff. And I'll be the one that just want to get out and go get things done because there's not a lot of people out. And I just love it. Now, as I said, I don't like it to be biting cold. But how it is right now, it's not too cold and it's definitely not hot. Absolutely love it. So I'm excited. So guys, it's been laid on my heart to talk to you all about a few things. You know, not uh, yesterday I did some videos and um, just depending on when you're watching this video, it probably won't be yesterday for you, but I did videos that's called my testimony, my journey or my journey, my testimony, and then another one that says before and after salvation. And I'm going to go ahead and add it. I'll pin it here in the comments and also in the description box because depending on when you're seeing this video, it could be months after I've done this video. And for some of you, it may be just yesterday, but just so you can see this. And so one of the things that the Lord has laid on my heart to talk to you guys about today is sin, right? Sometimes I get emails and people are talking to me about their struggles with sin and things of that nature. Sometimes I've had, you know, talked to people. And one of the things that I really get a lot is that, you know, brothers and sisters in the Lord or those who desire to serve God, but especially Christians are really, really having a hard time stopping certain things and struggling. And so in addition to the video that I did, I want to talk to you all and speak, you know, be really open and frank with you guys about sin as I do in most of my videos anyway, but we got to get down to it, right? So I believe I'm going to entitle this video, Got Sin? Let's talk about it. So the thing is, we have to realize all of us have sinned and have come short of the glory of God, meaning everyone sins. There's nothing you and I could have done. There's no sin that's not so bad as the next sin that makes us more eligible for salvation. Sin is sin to God. The sin of stealing a pencil is just as bad to God as you robbing a bank and like killing four people. OK, he just sees sin is sin. That's how holy he is. All right. In our minds, because we are tainted, we measure sins as well. This is not that bad, but sin is sin to God. Um, so we all have that when we come to salvation and our and we give our lives to the Lord. Guys, sometimes people get saved, but they don't completely they don't give everything to God. So there are things that sometimes people in their mind, they feel like they're, they they want to be saved from hell. Right. But. They don't necessarily want to let go of some of their sins because they enjoy the sin or sometimes they just feel that they're powerless against sin. But I'm here to tell you that you are not powerless. Jesus Christ died on the cross. His blood was not shed in vain and he's given us power to overcome sin. And that's why it was necessary that Jesus came and he was born in flesh. OK, even though he was a son of God, he came, he was born in flesh and he walked 30 something years um, in this earth. And experience different things so that we can see an example to emulate and to follow. When he was crucified and he rose from the dead, he left us the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, which can guide us into all truth. He's here to reprove us, of, reprove the world of sin and of judgment, of righteousness, guys, so that we can walk fully in the power and the authority that has been given to us through the gift of salvation. Now, guys, with any gift, someone could give you a gift and it's up to you whether you're going to take care of it or not, if you value it or not. If you're going to clean it off, you know, if it's something that's in the house, you're going to dust it off, you're going to leave it. Are you going to just throw it around? So salvation is a gift. Salvation is a gift. I listened to Rod Pickens. He has a YouTube channel and he said that people don't realize the gift of salvation until it's no longer available for them. And I'm here to tell you guys, a lot of people that has died and is in eternal damnation, they're wishing for these moments that you and I have right now, right? When the Lord comes back 
and those who don't make it, they're going to want this opportunity, but it will no longer be available. So us having the option for those of you that's not saved, this is a gift, an, operate, uh, an opportunity to get this gift. And those of you already have it, but sometimes we misuse it, right? Or we have in the past or currently still doing it where you think it's just your ticket out of hell, but not realizing it's you continue to develop as a believer and you don't have to sit and just let sin be a part of your life. Let me move this a bit. All right. So let me get into this because there's a lot I have to say and I think it's important and I'm going to use my life experiences as some example as I'm led. So there's a few things that the Lord had me put down. Now this applies to every sin. I mean, everyone has sins, but the principles will be the same. So I just, there were three that the Lord brought to me, which is anger, gossip, four actually, anger, gossip, jealousy, and sexual immorality. All right. So I'm going to read some things to you and then I'm going to talk about it. So anger. Those of you that struggle with anger, here are the things to consider, okay? Because sin is not just overtaking you. I can guarantee you that there's certain things that you are doing or have done or continue to do or not paying attention to that feeds it. So here's a few things. For anger, what are you doing or not doing, okay? What television shows are you watching, guys? What movies do you watch? Are you watching video games, movies, television shows, playing video games that has, you know, cursing, fighting, um, murder in it, okay? Angry TV shows. What kind of music are you listening to? Because these things will stir up the spirit of anger. Anger needs to be fed even when it's in its dormant stage. Dormant stage. So that means you're not upset right now but it's being fed right because you're watching certain things your the tv shows the movies video games that you may play may be filled with violence violent talking angry talking it feeds that spirit of anger okay um who who have access who do you have access to are you around people that incites your anger? Are you around other people that's angry? They talk angry. They have angry dispositions. Y'all get into arguments easily. You know, are you in a setting and an environment where anything can pop off at any moment where you will find yourself being angry? And then another question to ask those of you who have anger problems is, is it important to win more than to walk away? Is it important to you that you win this conversation than to walk away from the conversation? Okay, and I already spoke about m movies, I mean music. What are you listening to? Okay, so, and what type of conversations are you having, right? You have to look at all these things because some things can stir up old anger or incite anger. So you could be talking to somebody and what are they saying to you? They can be saying some things to you, maybe reminding you of a situation that really stirs up some old memories or things that gets you angry, make you all mad and you, you go over it again and you get angry and you get all upset. Or they're talking to you and telling you something that instigates and incites that anger within you. These are the things that you have to pay attention to. And these are things to just really, really consider and think about. OK, because as the whole point of saying this is to take an inventory of your life. Let me go to the next thing. Gossip. Those of you who like to gossip. OK, things to think about. Let's take an inventory. What sort of people do you draw? What type of people draw to you? Most of the times people that gossip, they're going to find themselves being around other people that are just as chatty, just as gossipy, who loves the tea. In other words, a gossip, just like you do. What is the content of your conversation? These are things to think about. What do you talk about? What do you get into? Because gossip does not just happen. Okay? Are you in the fishing boat? Are you in the fishing boat? We're talking about gossip now. Okay, meaning if you're in the boat with the net and the bait, then you're set to fish. So that means what environment are you in? Watch your environment. 
If you're, you are, you have to look around where you're at. Gossip is not just overtaking you. Are you placing yourself to be in a, in, in a position to gossip, right? Um, so what's your environment, right? Are you checking care? What type of conversation are you having? What type of reality TV shows do you watch? Reality TV shows is going to just, it's gossip on TV. It's about the latest, you know, some is real, most is not real. It's all conjured up. But, you know, when you're watching reality TV shows with a bunch of drama and all this, it's gossip. It is going to just wet the beak of that gossiping spirit, okay? Because it's all based around drama, okay? So these are the things you have to take a true inventory of your life. Let's talk about jealousy, right? Are you a jealous person? How can you say you're jealous? Well, take an inventory. Take an inventory of yourself, and what, what you do. Can anybody be happy around you? Can you genuinely be happy when people, when people, um, when something good happens to other people, when people, when someone, someone gets, they're getting ready to get married, they got a promotion or just, they, they bought something new. Does this bother you? Let's talk about this, guys. Jealousy victimizes you by making you feel you deserve what that person has and more. In fact, you're victimized, okay, by the poisonous thought that causes you on ease and on happiness when others are at ease and happy. Okay, so jealousy victimizes you by making you feel you deserve what the person has and more. You're victimized. You are victimized by the poisonous thoughts that causes you unease and unhappiness when others are at ease and happy. Okay? Why you're further a victim, those of you that struggle with the spirit, is because repetitive sadness on ease physically affects the body. It increases the heart rate. Okay, guys, I'm going to continue. I had to stop. All right. So, as I said... As I said, jealousy, starting again, victimizes you by making you feel you deserve what the person has and more. You're victimized by the thoughts that causes you on ease and unhappiness when others are at ease and happiness. Repetitive sadness, okay, so you're continually upset or sad or at or on or at your at an unease physically affects the body. It increases heart rate racing thoughts that sets the brain in motion while at the same time you're trying to maintain a facade of happiness for the individual or not maybe you're not even type that will act like you're happy okay all of these things are cumbersome and it wears on the body the mind and the spirit so this is what jealousy does to you Jealously, jealousy slowly kills you in a self-made prison where you often try to imprison others by holding them hostage as well. How do you do this? Well, how can you hold another person hostage by jealousy? Well, those who know you to be jealous will often not be able to really celebrate accomplishments or key moments of happiness because they have to either hide it, not mention it at all, suppress their happiness to make you feel comfortable. In some cases, if they don't suppress it, you will, okay? So I want you to take an inventory of that. Jealousy, now jealousy, anything and can spark it, right? Depending on what it is that you think that it really depends on where you're at in that state of pride or the way you think about a situation. But jealousy is something that really can permeate a room. So you have to take inventory, guys, of these things about you. And the first step, honestly, to this is, again, 
taking an inventory of your beginning. You have to explore your beginnings. You have to explore your childhood. You have to explore your years coming up, your formative years, because that's the first thing. You have to take an inventory and be real about where you're at and what's caused this. Okay, and you have to be real about the things that you do. You see, jealousy is one of those things. It's not like anger or gossip where you can kind of pinpoint certain things. Jealousy is something. It's a heart matter. They're all heart matters. Heart matters, but jealousy is something like it doesn't have to be anything even really tangible. It's this emotion that just comes up. But you have to be real and identify it. And one of the things, the inventory with you is going to be looking on the inside, exploring early childhood and stuff that you grew up with, what brought this spirit into your life and this habit, okay? Now, guys, I'm going to move on to sexual immorality. Again, the question is those who struggle with this sexual immorality, what are you doing or what are you not doing? Because all the sins that I've spoken to you about, these struggles, they don't just overtake you guys. So the thing you have to think of, what are you watching? What are you looking at? Do you watch steamy TV shows, movies that have sex in it, that have racy scenes in it, half naked men or women in it? What is the content? What is the content of what you're looking at? Let's talk about your company. Who's around you? Are there people that talk about lust? They lusting after men? What lusting after women? You know, always, you know, do they send you pictures? Um, um, adult pictures? Do they send you adult clips? You know, people can send text messages. So is that what's what's there, guys? What are you looking at? What do you send out to other people? Okay, let's talk about who's your weakness. Who's your weakness? Okay, and are you still in close compatibility with them? Close prox, not close compatibility, close proximity. Who makes you fall sexually? Now, I told you, you got to check out the what, what are you looking at? What are you listening to? But the who, who is the person that you fall into sexual immorality with, fall into bed with? The person that rouses your sex, your sex drive. You know, it may not even be someone you're sleeping with. It could be someone that you all just have these flirty, racy conversations. Could be just text, could be just pictures, right? What type of phone conversation are you having? You have to take an inventory of all these things. Take a look at your phone thread. Take a look at your text thread. Are you sexting? Are you texting? Are you close to it? What are your texts? What are your chats like? What's your Facebooks like? What Facebook account like? Who are you friends with on Facebook? Who is in your inbox? What other platforms of social media? Who are you Skyping? Where are you at? You understand? Where are you taking yourself? That's also another thing to look at. Where are you going? Where are your feet taking you? Where are you getting to your car and going? Where do you end up? Because again, these struggles, guys, they don't just happen. We have to participate in them. What music are you listening to? What's the lyrics? A lot of times people listen to the beat, but listen to the song, listen to the beats. What's the content? Do you go to sleep listening to love songs? Do you go to sleep with all types of things on TV? You, you go to bed watching one thing, fall asleep to it, then you wake up, something else is on. You know, who's your running buddy, if applicable? Who's your running buddy or running buddies? What do they do? A lot of times you may find you got that lone, that person who is just doing a dirt all alone, but then you may find somebody that, you know, they're trying to curb their sexual appetites and things of that nature, but they're around friends and around people that they're just like them. You know, they're struggling, but they're not trying to curb it. So you go to this person's house, they may have some people over there, may have some things on TV. They may be talking about certain things. They might be asking you, hey, can you come over here and do this for me? I need you to cover for me or, hey, ride with me here. You know, she got a home girl or, hey, come with me here. He got a friend. Just who are your running buddies? So guys, these are all the things that you have to be looking at and you have to 
have a desire to change because a lot of times people are asking the Lord, they are praying, but they're not doing their part. There are things that we have to do. God gave us choice. So you have to want to not do these things anymore. You see, when ever Jesus healed anyone in the Bible, the exception I believe was the leper. The leper said to Jesus, Lord, if you will, I will be clean. And Jesus says, I will. And he touched him and healed him because the leper came with the faith already. Like, I know if you will, I will be. But most of everyone else, you always say, do you believe? Do you believe? Right? So that's the thing. Do you believe you can be set free? Do you want to be set free? Because guys, if you want to be set free, then you have to do what it takes to be free. Guys, I will tell you, there is this guy and he is, <laughs> he is very handsome. He is a very good looking. Okay. He's like six something and he's just gorgeous to me. Right. He's nowhere near me. We're not living in the same state or anything. But guess what? I am highly attracted to him. So I know that. It doesn't matter if I got saved now and, and whatever. The thing is, you have to be real with what your attraction is. Okay? And then we've been together. Okay? Intimately. So anytime <laughs> he comes around or he has comes around... Oh, all the in innocent conversation never stays innocent. So me being saved and where God has brought me from, it's people will think, oh, well, you don't have power if you still, no, 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 no. My heart ain't pumping no Kool-Aid. And the last time I checked, I'm not a baby alive or a strawberry shortcake doll. Okay. I'm a woman. Okay, with blood running through her veins and a heart that beats. Bit of better, bit of better. Okay. So be, just because you're saved don't mean you're blind. Okay. So it is important that you don't use your, your salvation for an occasion to the flesh. Like, oh, I'm saved now. I should be able to call and talk to my lover. I should be able to get on the phone and have long conversations with this person. No, no, no. A part of salvation and what comes with salvation is wisdom, okay? So do I feel like if I see him, I would just fall into bed with him? No, I don't feel that way. But I know that I'm attracted to, attracted to him and he's attracted to me. And we just have that, you know, there's that what y'all call chemistry, all right? But over the years, whenever he just, he, he reached out to me when I was on Facebook and everything, it just goes in a whole different direction. So me having an attraction to him, no, I'm not going to play with that. And it has nothing to do with, oh, I don't have enough power. Do I feel like I will fall into bed with him? No, because I love the Lord more, but I am aware of the reality of, of my attraction to him and his to me. So no, I'm not going to put myself in a place that, oh, well, I'm saved now. I'm going to just have conversations. No, when God saves you from certain things, you leave those doors closed. You leave those doors closed, guys. So you have to be in a place to be real with what your struggles are and to close it and shut it off. If you want to be free, there's certain things you and I have to do. There's certain things you have to, you have to shut the door and that's it. Very often people are like, I'm saved now. So it means I can just go running through walls. No, that's for warfare. But when it comes to things of matters of the flesh and someone you're attracted to and things that sparks your anger and things that sparks your jealousy and things that sparks your gossip, you have to shut it off because the Lord says, guys, and I'm going to share two scriptures with you. The thing is that you have to do to overcome sin is to confess it. You have to acknowledge it, that this is your weakness. This is your area. Then you confess it and then you cast it away from you. That means you cut it off. Okay. Ezekiel, 
Ezekiel 18 and 31 says, cast away from you all your transgressions which you have committed and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. For why should you die? Cast away from you all your transgressions which you have committed and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. For why should you die? The other scripture, guys, is Matthew 5 and 29 and 30, where Jesus says, and if your right hand, right eye causes you to sin, um, if your right eye offend you, pluck it out and cast it away from you. It's better that one of your members should perish than your whole body to be cast into hell. Okay. And if your right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for you that one of your members should perish than that your whole body should be cast into hell, guys. You have got to cut those things off. Cut it off off all together guys if you're having issues in your flesh you have to cut off all that sex thing text in change your number if you need to close those doors for those friends with benefits the almost friends with benefits people who you've been intimate with and they're still around and y'all calling and talking and you end up having those phone conversations you our part is to cut those things off guys okay if you have, you're a person that you're jealous, you're a jealous type of person, then you have to allow the Lord to teach you to love yourself. Okay. Because the truth is you don't love yourself, no matter how grand you appear. If you love yourself, then you wouldn't be jealous and ask the Lord to put in you a love for people. Because if you love others, then you learn to be happy for them, guys. When you are in the process of God changing you, and if this is my opinion, I will say don't go to events that stirs up your jealousy, okay? That means not going on people's Facebook pages and looking at things and getting mad and getting jealous. Avoid copious intakes of shows about wealth and money and cars and homes and fashion, okay? I wouldn't even, I'm not, I, I would say while the Lord is healing you, the things that stirs you up, don't go to it right now while you are being healed, while you are being restored. And you will find that when the Lord changes you, invite and just avoid those environment. And while the Lord changes you guys, you will find that suddenly you can just go and, and someone is, uh, an event happens for someone and you are happy. You can really rejoice with them. But guys, you have to be willing to confess this because people that are jealous, they don't like to confess it. They don't like to say out of their mouth. So you have to have the ability to confess that, guys, and then allow the Lord to heal you and to, to explore what happened in childhood or when you were a teenager or some point in your life that drove you to make you feel jealousy because jealousy often is sparked by some form of rejection. Okay. If you're a person that you gossip, guys, you need to avoid those sessions. Get out of those sessions, guys. Cut off the conversation. Stop taking those phone calls. Speak God's word in the middle of all the gossip. When they want to bring you the tea, if you say, let's pray for them and you start off in prayer, I bet you they won't keep coming to you. And then ask the Lord to take that desire out of you where you want to hear what's going on. You have to want to, and you need to ask the Lord to take those things from you. And guys, the other thing, as I said, you have to want to be set free. Sexual immorality, you know the things that takes you there. You know the things that causes you to sin. You know, the person cut it off and it's not that you're living in a, a box. You know, I go out and I, I've gone to places. There's someone that's attractive, but I'm here to tell you when you have the Holy Spirit in you, you're not jumping out your skin for that person, but you're aware that they're attractive, right? Just as I told you about someone in my past. Well, they're attractive to me and I know that I'm not, I don't have a desire. I'm not fighting a desire to call him or to reach out to him, but I know that, no, I'm not going to pick up the phone and start having conversation and stirring and fanning that flame. That's not going to happen. 
So you have to be in a place to say, Lord, I no longer want to walk in this sin. I no, 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 no longer want to do this thing. Turn it over. You have to be in a place where you have to realize there's a this kind that the Bible talks about. This kind comes out only by prayer and fasting. Certain things, guys, is going to take prayer and fasting, consistency, keeping those doors shut. You have to be desperate enough to save your soul. It's a matter of life and death for us spiritually. So guys, you must have that tenacity. If you want to be free, then you need to do your part. And your part is obeying God when he speaks to you. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit when he said, don't do that. Don't take that call. Shut that off. Don't go over there. Don't do this. Don't do that. You see? And if you follow, if you get into the habit of obeying the Lord, getting in the presence of the Lord through prayer, and by the word, it doesn't have to be long and dramatic, guys, but honestly, and bring that to the Lord. He will renew in you a right spirit. He'll create in you a clean heart. He'll renew a right spirit within you. And guys, the more you submit yourself to the Lord, the more you submit, not only just submitting, but letting go, shutting those doors, ending those conversations, shutting off those kryptonite situations that bring you to your knees in weakness and cause you to sin, then now the Lord is going to do his part. That's supernatural. And what you find is when he moves in your life, when he sees you have a desire and you're holding on tenaciously to him, you'll find those desires will be in check. You won't desire them anymore. And when they come around you, you're going to have the wisdom to know I'm not going to be entangled again in the yoke of bondage. I hope this has helped you guys. Walking before the Lord clean and upright is possible, but you must be willing to yield to the power of the Holy Spirit. Peace out.